So the way that this works is that the student would type their name in here. Uh, Help me, got it, spelt it right. Uh, and then they would choose the ethanol context. Um, so <clears throat> they need to do some pre-planning before they come to this, but what they do know is that they can generate a full set of tubes containing the, the phosphate phenol antipyrene buffer, um, which basically has the, the chemical that will turn pink later on. Uh, they've got the enzyme mix, which is the glucose, uh, sorry, ethanol oxidase and peroxidase that will make the colour. And of course, an ethanol standard and some water if they want it. Now they can, if they wish, uh, generate some tubes to do some dilutions. So that would be possible. Um, but I'm going to do it without doing any dilutions. I'm going to sort of do the dilutions in the wells of the plate. So I'm going to make a plate, which is, let's make it default six by four. And then I'm going to pipette in uh, zero to 10 microliters of this standard. Now, again, really the students have to have done the calculations to work out how much of this standard needs to go in each well. So there's quite a lot of planning that they, they, they need to do, but I already know that zero to 10 will do the trick. So I'll select 10 uh, P, 20, set it to 10 microliters, and I'll suck up 10 microliters and put it into that well there. Then I'll adjust the pipette to eight. And I won't bother changing the pipette tip because I figure that I'm not going to get any contamination uh, simply by pipetting ethanol in and out of uh, the, the ethanol solution and the blank wells. So four microliters and two microliters. You do still have to keep your wits about you that you're not sucking up what you just put in. But I think that's got it. So it's zero, two, four, six, eight, ten across there. Um, look, just for completeness, I'll put the, the water in as well. So two microliters of water into this one. Uh, I'll put four microliters. Some I will change the pipette tip. Um, so we'll put four microliters of water into this one here, generate a new tip. Uh, oh, not four, we want six, don't we? No, have I done? Yes, that's right. I've got to keep, you see, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to keep your wits about you with this. So six microliters into this one and or no, eight microliters. See, I'm not concentrating at all, am I? Eight microliters into this one. And I, and I didn't use a different pipette tip there, so I might suffer the consequences. Now, I won't bother mixing these at this stage, um, although I could mix by sucking up and down with a pipette tip. Instead, I'm going to put 180 microliters, uh, I'll put 170 microliters of the amino antipyrene into each one. So, so put it in there, put it in there, put it in there, put it in there, <coughs> and in there, and in there. So there we go. So they've now all now got ethanol standard and the PPA buffer and the volume in each one should be about the same. Now I can mix these by sucking up and petting down. So that will that will be enough to mix. The other way of mixing is to click mix on there. And that mixes them too. Now, no reaction is going to take place yet until I put in the enzyme mix. So I'm going to put in 20 microliters of the enzyme mix. And before I do that, I'm going to start the stopwatch. So if I suck up some enzyme, start the stopwatch and start pipetting it into the first one, uh, suck up some enzyme. And you notice I'm not changing the pipette tip here, which I probably should be doing, but it 
you know, the crossover of contamination is not going to be anything to, to worry about. Um, and they are all going. So let's mix them again. And this reaction is going to take about 30 minutes or so. Uh, and of course, we haven't got that long. So I'm just going to dilate time a bit. So let's get time whizzing up a bit. So I've just set it to going about 30 times normal time. And you can see some colors developing in these wells. Uh, let's actually take it up even further. And we can view what's happening from the top. We can see a very nice color gradation there. Uh, so that's, that's pretty nice. I'll just take the, I think the reaction should be pretty much done by, by 20 minutes. So let's just take the, the speed down to, to one again. Uh, let's measure the absorbance of that. Now, if you look along, along row A, you've got what appears to be quite a nice sort of relationship between the amount of ethanol we put in and the absorbance. That's, that's pretty nice. But one thing to notice is that we're measuring this at 437 nanometers, which isn't the extinction maximum. For that we really want it to be I think 500 nanometers so let's change our um, plate reader so that it's reading at 500 and see what happens when we do it again and now uh, we're again getting the same sort of linearity but this time the absorbances are a bit bigger now we can just copy this information here and paste it into Excel so if I make myself a blank workbook and then just paste that in, you can see that these numbers are nicely formatted for me to draw a standard curve. Now, having satisfied myself that I can get a good linearity there, I might want to now go to the next step and do some stuff with the unknown samples. And to generate the unknown samples, I just click on Elmer set here. And these are the 10 driver samples. Now you can see that each one has a number and a name. Those, the, the concentration of, of ethanol in each standard is unique for each student. So every single student gets a completely different problem. So you can't possibly get any copying of other people's results. You can get copying of, of the strategy people follow, but not the actual data. The other thing that you might notice here is that the samples are slightly pink already. And that was something that really confused a lot of the, the students. And the reason why they're pink already is that the, the blood samples have undergone some hemolysis as they've been made into serum. Anyway, the, bo the bottom line now is that we have to decide how much of these samples we're going to put into the wells uh, in order to get some results that are on the standard curve, regardless of whether the drivers are under the limit or well over the limit or on the borderline. And of course, that requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of uh, iterative working, uh, basically trying things, looking to see whether or not you get results you believe in and, um, and carrying on until you do. Now, I should point out that every time you load this, you get a different set of samples. So you can't, you can't sort of cheat by simply trying lots of different things and then going back and, and doing it again, uh, assuming everything's going to be the same. So your strategy is the thing that's, that needs to be reproducible. Uh, so that you can apply it to a fresh set. So I hope that's given an idea of how that works. It was a tremendously successful assignment, uh, as I've detailed in the talk, and I'd uh, be very, very happy to talk about it more um, if you're interested.